In this video, we'll take a look at how to do the chi-square test for independence on the TI-84 calculator. Uh, this follows example one that I, I did it in a previous video. Um, also, I want to mention that the chi-square test for independence is sometimes also called the chi-square test for homogeneity or sometimes just the chi-square test. So in order to get to the chi-square test, you'll go into stats. And if we hit the right arrow and go over to the test menu, and I'm going to hit the up arrow one time. That's a little trick to get uh, all the way through this. You'll see that uh, on my calculator, I have two chi-square tests. I have the chi-square test, which is going to be the chi-square test of independence or the chi-square test of homogeneity. And then this is the chi-square goodness of fit test, which we're not going to cover. Okay. So if we choose option C and hit enter, it's going to bring up some information. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different about this test is we're not going to be dealing with data in lists we actually have to type the data in a matrix. And I haven't done that yet, and I'll show you how to do that. And we only have to have the observed values. It'll automatically calculate the expected values uh, for us, and I'll show you how we get those expected values as well. So since we can't do anything right now, let's exit out of this, and let's at least get the data into a matrix, so that way we can move forward and do this um, uh, chi-square test to get the test statistic and the p-value. So I'm going to exit out of here, so I'll go second and quit to get out. And then uh, we're going to use the matrix function. This x to the minus 1, you'll notice above it, it says uh, matrix right there. So we're going to go to second and then the x to the minus 1 button to bring up the matrix menu. We want to edit a matrix. So I'll go over to edit. And we're going to edit uh, matrix A right here. This is where we're going to put our data in. So we'll select that and say enter. And the example that I did previously, for example one, we had uh, gender was one of our variables, and we had two rows, which were male and female. And then we had t-shirt size for our column variable, which we had three columns for that. Uh, the t-shirt size were small, medium, and large. So we have to define the, the rows in the columns of the matrix. So we'll say two rows, and you'll see that that'll generate two rows for us. And then we're going to do three columns, and then it'll create three columns for us. And now we just have to enter each of the values in each of the cells. So um, in the first cell, we have the value of 15. The second cell, we had the value of 19 for our observed value. In the third cell, we had the value of 27 for the observed value. And then we're moving to the second row, the first cell of the second row, that value is 26. And then 11. And finally, two. So those are all our observed values right there. Now we should be all set with the matrix. So let's go ahead and hit our second button and the mode button to exit out of there. Now one of the things I like to do is I like to verify that I actually put the right values in. So if you wanted to see what values you typed in for your matrix, if you hit second and go to the x to the minus 1, Notice now matrix A has dimensions next to it. It says it's two by three, which is indicating that it's populated. I'm going to select that by hitting enter, and then I'll hit enter again to view what's inside that matrix. So I have 15, 19, 27, 26, 11, and two for each of the cells in that matrix. I think that's just a good practice to get in and view that and make sure you did that correctly. Now at this point, we're ready to do the hypothesis test to get the test statistic in the p-value. So we'll go into the stats button, or stats menu right here, and we're going to go specifically over to the test. That's where our hypothesis tests and confidence intervals are. And if you hit the up arrow one time, that'll bring you to the bottom of the list. And if you scroll up to, mine will be option C. If you have an older calculator, it may be a different uh, value than that. But it's the chi-square test is what we want to use, and we'll select that. And the first thing it's saying is it's saying, okay, where are your observed values? And those are stored in matrix A. And it's saying, okay, we're gonna store the expected values in matrix B. If you recall from the matrix menu, there are no dimensions next to this. So when we get done running this test, you're gonna see that there's dimensions next to it and we can pull that matrix up and it'll have our expected values in there. So really, after we enter the data into the matrix, all we have to do is go down and choose calculate. And if you had values in matrix B, just so you're aware, it'll overwrite those values and repopulate matrix B with the expected values or the expre expected frequencies. So we're gonna say calculate and hit enter. And when you do this, you can see our chi-square test statistic is 22.904 or 905. Our p-value is 
And you got to remember it's times 10 to the negative fifth, all right? This is in scientific notation. So really there's four zeros in front of the one. So we have the decimal point, four zeros, and then the one. We have to move the decimal place over five places to the left from where it is. And then it summarizes our degrees of freedom. So that's how we get our, our chi-square test statistic and our p-value. Now let's take a look at our expected frequencies or our expected cell counts uh, from the matrix, okay? So if you go to second in x to the minus one now, this will pull up the matrix menu. Now if you notice, matrix B is a two by three matrix. And if you leave it on names, that means we're selecting it. We're not editing it or performing any math on it. So we don't wanna be over here in either of those menus. So if you select enter, um, that'll bring up the matrix B right here. And if you hit enter again, it'll show you what values are in there. So here's our expected cell counts or expected frequencies for each of those respective cells. So hopefully this gives you a good idea how to use the TI-84 to do the chi-square test of independence and get your chi-square value, your p-value, and then the expected cell counts.